Dr. Ann Webster, member for Mallee, great to have you back with us on Flow, reporting in from the airport about to leave Canberra. Yes, how are you, Ricky? Uh, good, thanks. You must be glad to be getting out of Canberra. There's just been another week of some unfortunate allegations floating around the parliament. Good to get away from all of that? Uh, look, it's been a um, tough two weeks, I have to say, and the Prime Minister this week said that he actually genuinely feels sorry for the 2019 cohort of um, elected MPs and senators because we've really had a, a pretty unusual time, shall we say. Pretty well, challenging. There hasn't been a normal, I get what he's leaning at there, it's not been a normal sort of term, but are we ever going to have a normal term of parliament again um, during this, you know, with the pandemic and the way things have changed? I Look, I honestly don't know. Um, I don't know what normal is. Uh, no, probably the first few months the pandemic arrived. Um, on our shores, things were just flat out busy as they are. And of course, then we uh, started to recognise the painful oddities in our federation, shall I call them. And, um, you know, the power of the state, state emergency laws, um, health directives that could lock down a state for months on end. Uh, I mean, I'm through the most horrendous period of time since World War Two. Now, when you um, we look at these allegations that are floating around Parliament about behaviour, is electing more women to Parliament the answer, or is there is a whole lot more complex than that in terms of getting, I guess, better treatment of women around Parliament House? Look, I read through the... Um, I confess I haven't read the entire report yet, but the first uh, chapter, which talks about the recommendations... Um, this is the Jenkins one report. Of, yeah, the Jenkins report. Apologies. Um it talked about the higher number of women who bully staff than men who bully staff. Uh, if I read that correctly, I thought, wow. I mean, when I when people were coming to me as the Nats rep to talk to and who wanted to do that early on, uh, that was certainly the impression that I got as well. So are more women in Parliament the answer? Look, it may be part of the answer to behaviours, but I think everyone needs to take stock and I think the changes that have now been um, implemented, you know, the independent reporting body, uh, you can go as a staff or an impacted to independent people and talk through and work through the issues and, you know, potential processes for managing um, disquiet at Parliament. The fact is Parliament, like many workplaces, is a very stressful environment and that does not justify the behaviours, um, but, you know, I think we need to have better ways to manage that. Sometimes it's said that Parliament is just a representation of just what the public is like. We had some allegations about Ambulance Victoria come out this week, a survey done by the Human Rights Commission in Victoria indicating a serious culture of bullying and harassment and sexual harassment there. Um, I know it doesn't justify it, but do we actually have a broader problem in workplaces about sexual harassment, for instance? Look, I think that it's uh, it's an understood fact that um, across our work environments, regardless of what they are, we know we need to lift our game. All of us need to lift our game. You know, we need to just take a step back before we shoot off our mouths or and be, or behave in inappropriate ways, and consider how's that going to impact everybody else, and what does it do for our society? I mean, it's. It's right that we need to call out poor behaviour because it impacts everybody. You know, whatever you walk past is what the, the standard you approve is a fact. But at the same time, I certainly don't hold with, you know, a, a, the, um, the tendency to identity politics and virtue signalling. I just think it's, it's got us into a very, very oversensitive environment now, which has... Um, you know, it's very challenging for people just to be real, just to be who they are. So there's a balance in all of these things that you just can't, you know, give a trite black and white answer to. Now, you've got, uh, heading back to the very real people of your electorate, as opposed to whatever goes on in Canberra, there's some grants yes. that have gone out to uh, volunteer groups and others. Uh, just run us through a few of those grants that have been received by people in your local electorate. Yeah, look, Ricky, I've got to just say that I um, love being home in my electorate talking to real people. It's fantastic. And uh, the volunteer environment that regional Victoria is just embraces with both arms is just fantastic because it, it 
it's who we are as community. It's who we are as Australians. So there are 32 volunteer organisations in uh, Mali who've received funding in this round from Berry Willock Golf Club and Bula Historic Learning and Progress Association, the Charlton Croquet Club, the Charlton Men's Shed, um, the Community Men's Shed in Samana, a little bit south of you. Um, where am I going? Horsham, several of them, Saniva, Kerrang, Menangatang, um, several in Maryborough, Mildura BMX, Mildura Bowls, Millawa Advisory Group, Millawa News, um, Musical Society, Mildura, Northwest Victorian Motorcycle Club. Uh, we've got Redcliffe, Sunraysia, Sunraysia. We've got Kira Support, Dirt Carters, Sunraysia Drag Racing, um, Swan Hill, Warwick Mobile and District Historical Society. You know, they're just fantastic organisations who are out there serving their community, giving back to their community. I just want to commend every one of them. And these federal government grants, uh, are they to support uh, what screening checks for volunteers? What kind of uh, example of what they be, would they be spent on? No, it's not. It's for various things. You know, if they needed um, IT equipment, for example, it is about stuff that helps volunteers do their job. So it might be an oven or um, investment in a trailer with, um, you know, technical equipment in it so that they can go out and do whatever they're doing support people. So it's it's about material that helps a volunteer organisation continue to serve the public. Well, it's good to know that outside of the Canberra bubble, the uh, federal government is able to help local community groups. Dr Webster, thanks for joining us today on Flow. Much appreciated. Thanks, Ricky. Great to be with you.